<laughs> you hear me talking a lot about soft rods, shock absorption, things like that, but there is a time and there is a place for a stiff rod, who uh, misses, or otherwise known as a fast action rod. The Sunray Livestream Distance. What's this rod for? You can't always fish a soft rod. Sometimes the situation just doesn't work for that. Sunk line is one of those situations. Sometimes a sunk rod, uh, soft rod hasn't got the stiffness, the rigidity to pull that heavy sunk line out of the water. You need a bit of stiffness, authority over the line. So the advantages of a stiffer rod are wind, sunk line, Another advantage of a stiffer rod is they're easier to cast. It used to be, when I was a kid growing up in the magazines, oh, stiff rods, fast action rods, they're hard, you've got to get the timing right. Rubbish, rubbish. Softer rods are harder to cast because the tip goes everywhere and it's harder to control, you've got to be a better caster. With this one, the tip stays where it is, goes out and in. That's it, sticks the line out. Today, I'm fishing a snake fly, a medium sink line, I get down two, three sunk line, banging it out into the wind, you're letting it sink and you're letting it, you're stripping it back. A stiff, fast action rod needn't be a beast to cast, it can be a surgical tool as well. Have a look at the guides on this, okay? They're called delta guides, never been used on a fly rod before. Single leg standoff delta guides, it keeps the line far away from the blank, but it keeps a shallower angle from your large arbor reel down to your guides, so the line doesn't go like this. Okay, if you've got a, a small stripper, your line comes from the reel to your stripper and there. And that angle there creates a lot of friction and it takes away from the feel of the line. In, today I'm going to be using a sunk line. And with a sunk line, you've got to be able to feel everything, haven't you? You can't see the line, you can't see the dry fly. So you've got to be able to feel everything. Reducing the angle of contact between the line and the stripper guides helps you do that. Let's get on with it. The way those guys keep that line off the blank. Very far standoff guides. Single leg. That delta shape. It's like an oval shape. They're not round. It means there's even less friction in the guides. Like I say, you've got to be building up a sort of fish finder map in your head when you're fishing a sunk line. Oh, there, like that. So you can feel the slightest take. You know what's happened to your fly. I mean, you can't see a float there, so sunk line. Well, you can, but it's not like fishing a floating line. So, a sunk line has to be strong, but very, very sensitive. You watch the running line go out here. <laughs> when would I use this rod with a floating line? If it was windy and I needed to fish on the top, or if I needed to fish a really aggressive fly, I'd put a short head line on. This is the 10 foot seven. I'd put a short head seven weight line on and a bigger fly. Really, this rod for me is, I would have this, if I was boat fishing or bank fishing like this, I'd have a floating line and then have this set up with the sinking line permanently. That being said, stiff rods needn't be beasts hurt you. You know, some rods are just, they've got no action. This has got action. I don't know if you can see, but it's bending, or else the loops wouldn't be going out nice. It's a workhorse, you know? Oh, <laughs> particularly windy day. <laughs> Good fun, though. Good fun. Fishing a sunk line, it's not just a bash it out and strip it back situation. You've got to have a mental map of what the fly's doing, where it is, and the arc at which it's fishing. Um, what do I mean? Do you want it to be fishing level? Do you want it to be fishing up? Do you want it to be jigging? Do you want it to be sweeping? In this case, I want it to be sinking down like that, and then I want it to come on a gentle arc, a rising pitch like that. In fact, this initial stage, you can let it sink and then draw it up like that. That initial little arc can trigger interest in a fish. And what I've seen is they trigger the interest, that gets them going, and then they figure of eight behind the fly. As it's being stripped in, the fish are figuring eight, swimming behind it, and then they might nip it, and then get it again. Let's see if it happens. What I do is I lean into it and actually stand back and draw it up. It gives it, for me, it gives it a more natural movement. Oh, no. Is it? Oh, no. No, that's weed. <laughs> oh, no, it's not. Oh, is it? No, it's a fish banging at that. That is a fish banging at that. It's 
So see what I mean, right? No weed on that fly. No weed at all, right? That's a snake fly. Look, no weed at all. I fish it that three times. I can tell you that for sure. Fish it that three times. It's that initial rise and fall action that they like, and then they aggress it. You know that figure of eight? What he did then when he's coming up, bang, hits it once. I thought it was weed. Bang, hits it twice, and then a big sharp pull at the end. Snake flies, notoriously difficult at hooking. Let's try it again though. Trust me, that was a fish. Let's bring some of that line in so it's a bit more manageable. Let's try that again, shall we? Let it sink down, and then what I do is I move back like this, actually move my body like that, and I'm physicalizing the action of the fly. If you use your hands on that initial thing, it's, it's much more harder to do. I've, I mean, I just know from experience, if I do that and start stripping in, it creates this sort of room of the fly, and that's what they like, that's what, they, that's what you like that time. See if we can do it again, let it sink down a little bit better. Lean in, lean in, start stripping. Wasn't quite as deep that time. There you go. Oh, nice fish. Oh, yes. See what I mean? Oh, he's come off. Snakes, mate, snakes, notoriously difficult, but you get the point, it's that. Whoom, induced take. I'll tell you where, I'll tell you a little story. I read Sea Trout Fishing by Hugh Falkus, and I was fishing a sea trout pool and it was bright, bright sunlight. And I was fishing a MEP spinner. And what I used to do is after I read that, he talks about a spoon shaped bowl. I'd throw me MEPs in, and I used to smoke back in the day, right? And I'd stop, I'd put the rod on the floor, right, and have a fag. Then I'd pick up the MEPs, take up the slack, and kick the blade. And that action got me two bright spanking four pounders uh, on a day where nobody was catching fish on that river. And I'm doing the same here, but I'm, instead of using the thick spool, I'm using my body to kick that fly into action. You saw what happened. The first time I did it, three hits, three aggresses. This second time, he hit, didn't he? Now, he didn't stay on, cause snake fly, but you get the point. Sunk line fishing, you've got to be thinking, you've got to be making a mental map of what the fly is doing. I love it. Okay, drift, like that. Ooh, drift. That's an interesting thing. You make the back cast, and then instead of going forward, you actually go backwards and drift back, hook up that line, and then stroke it out. You don't need power into a wind. With a rod like this, it's still about technique. The rod isn't gonna bang it out. You're gonna unroll the line, but the, the rod's stiff enough to not contort under the wind. Have a look at a rod when it's being fished in a wind, right? When people are making the back cast, the wind is actually bending the rod. Though I've seen it in, like, in, in Jurassic Lake in Argentina. The wind has almost bent the rod completely flat. It's not the weight of the line, it's the wind. So you need a rod to keep its shape so you can keep your technique going. Still the same technique. Got a barbed wire fence there, which is absolutely screaming out to catch my line on that back cast. So you've got to make a high back cast and drift. Okay, change of peg. <laughs> Often the first cast in the first spot gets the first fish. That didn't really make sense, but you know what I mean. Like that. <laughs> exactly like that. Yeah, there's nothing, there's not such a thing as a still water. They are pools, exactly like a river. And if you spook a pool, in the river, you won't catch fish. But when you go to a new pool on the still water, be mindful that your first cast in that pool is probably your best chance. Oh, nice. Good table fish, why? The right size, and very strong, very clean. Nice full tails on it. Reverse roll cast, make a back cast, Get the old hand marker to my hand. Oof. That was actually a reverse reach mend into a wind. So that I can get the rate of retrieve correct. You want the rate of retrieve correct and you want your camera angle correct. Okay, here we go. What do I mean by that? You see the line it's facing towards 
you know, it wasn't like that. Okay, I want it facing towards the line. If I'm going to retrieve from this side, I don't want the rod there, because look, that's a right angle. I want direct contact. Oh, there you go. And that's why. <laughs> now, he might get off because I, I wasn't concentrating, and there's a snake fly, but you get the point. That is a hot spot, and you want the rate of angle correct. All right, another nice fish. Who says that sunk line fishing is just throw it out and bash? Absolutely not, absolutely not. Right, you really got to put a lot of thought into it. Don't even have to get the fish out of the water. Now, that fly's landed towards the weed. I'm going to strip to make it fall over the weed. Again, you know, you're thinking about your sunk line fishing. You're fishing, I'm fishing a sunk line, but I'm tight up against the bank. It's not always about depth. A lot of it's to do with speed of retrieve and the size of the fly. This is a fast sinking line, but I can strip it back quick, so I'm only using it as a fast intermediate, not a full fast sink. I don't know if you can see the line. It's about two foot underneath the water there, but it's a fast sink. If I let it sink for longer, it would go all the way down to seven foot, all the way to the bottom, obviously. It's the speed at which it does it. This sinks at approximately three inches per second. So I can get it to depth quick, but only if I'm using a faster retrieve. And I can only use a faster retrieve because of the fly that I'm using. In this case, a big snake fly. You wouldn't use it with a nymph, would you? A nymph doesn't swim that fast. So it's all to do with the size of fly you're fishing, what you're fishing, where you're fishing, and the angle of the retrieve. Actually, when you start to think about it, sunk line fishing is very complicated, isn't it? Let me show you how to cast a sunk line. Well, you can strip it all the way into your feet and just pick it out, as you've seen me do, right? Or, let's strip this back. If you don't want to retrieve the whole line, in some cases you don't or you can't, you can strip it back, strip it back, strip it back, strip it back. Then, just go into a roll cast, dig it out nice and slowly, pop it up, and that's how you raise a sunk line. It's called a roll cast pickup. Reverse roll pickup into an overhead cast. Oh, there we go. There was a pull then. That was a pull. See if he'll come back. Oh, he's. Oh, mate. There he, oh, mate, he's hitting it two or three times. Oh, I love it. Oh, he's hit that three times on the way in. Oh, yeah, one took then. Just nipping. So there's action all the time. You're probably getting a, a, a follow every cast, right? And then some of the times, those follows, they'll just nip, they'll nip. Sometimes they'll nip, come back, bang, right? But there's fish, ha there's, there's activity happening all the time. I've seen it. When this lake doesn't have wind on it, you can actually see much deeper. And I fished this same line, but with a floating booby, and you can see them higher in the water. I've seen the fish's behavior. Oh, oh, he pulled, he, he took, he took. Oh, yeah, he, oh, he took again. Ah, oh, wow. Oh, oh, mate, he took on the way up. I'm just going to put one more there and fish it deep. One, one last cast. <laughs> I get a lot of people saying to me, like, you don't have to cast that far. You don't have to cast that far. Sometimes you do have to cast that far. You do have to cast that far. Or sometimes the wind is so strong that your long cast becomes a short cast. The man who can cast a far a long way can also cast a short way. The man who can only cast a short way can only cast a short way. People who say you don't have to cast that far, they say that because they can't cast that far. I don't care what anybody says. Everybody wants to cast that far. Since time began, people want to cast that far. Why? Because often you need to. This is one of those cases. Because you've got to get the sunk line in the right arc. If I only cast a short way with the sunk line, it's not fishing in the right arc and it's not got the right tension on the line. That's just fishing in a level plane just underneath the surface, which is fine, but I'm not nymphing, I'm sunk line fishing. So I want to get the belly down and I want it to get it rising in incline sweep. Okay, so you need that distance out to let the whole thing sink 
right? In fact, the running line doesn't sink because it's much thinner. It does sink if you put the rod underneath the water, but it needs help. So now the fly's gone like that and it's gonna rise up like that. If I was casting a short way, it would be rising like that. It would be fishing like that. If I cast a long way, it fishes like that. And I've already proven that's exactly the retriever, retriever I want. So yeah, you have to cast a long way sometimes. Fishing this snake, okay? I don't know if you can see that. But you see that tail there? That's what they're hitting, and that's what you're not hooking, okay? Sometimes they'll hit in the middle as well. You've got two points of contact here. You've got a hook here. In fact, that's bent. That might be one of the reasons why it's not converting. <laughs> Check your hooks. <laughs> that might be one of the reasons. There, it's bent. Okay, so yeah, make sure your hooks aren't bent for one. But yeah, snakes in general, they're extremely, that's why they've got two hooks like that. Anyway, I digress. Let's move on. Let it sink, let it sink. Manage your running line. Get the tip underneath the water. Step back. Like you're in, uh, what's it called? Strictly Come Dancing. Get it stripping back. Get it stripping back. There you go. Oh, one top, one top, one top. He'll come back. He'll come back. He'll come back. He took then. Trust me, he took then. You'll see it on GoPro. Damn. Damn. They are so funny today. Wow. Do it again. We'll use the sweep again. Okay. Quite happy with that. Let's, 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 let's. I really hope you can see. I was stripping back then and the line just went boom, like that. Boom. Not, not a lot. You might be able to see the line on the GoPro just rise up. If it was weed, you wouldn't see me cast out again. I'd have brought it in, checked the weed, got it off and cast out. But trust me, it's not weed. There's no weed here. They've pulled it all out. Okay, let it sink, let it sink, let it sink. Strictly condensing. Strip, strip. Now then, see if, there you go, told you. I was prepared for that aggress. Same point as where you hit last time. So slight, so slight. This rod's very, very delicate. You see the first time you wouldn't have even known it hit, but I knew he'd, I knew he hit and I knew he'd come back. Well, I didn't know he'd come back. I'm lucky he'd come back, but there you go. Okay, so you get my point. A distance rod has to be sensitive. It's giving you data back all the time. You can't see it. There's no dry fly, there's no rising fish. You're not covering fish. You're not striking on a carp. You know, you're not even seeing a pike come up and, oh, he's, he's there, he's there, he's there. None of that. Some of this uh, fishing I've been doing today has been quite deep. But I've been making a mental map, like a fish finder. And I've been imagining the fish come along and they've been aggressing it, hitting it, hitting it, hitting it. I've had countless knocks today. With a rod that hasn't got the right rings on it, isn't the right taper and the right density, you won't feel those knocks. You'll just think, oh, it's a dull day. There's nothing happening. A lot of it's to do with the angle of contact with the stripping guides, right? If you look there, the angle of contact's a gradual, gradual incline. It doesn't go up and then to a small stripper here, like this, okay? Large arbor reels, right? Look how, look where the line comes from. That used to, reels used to be like this and the line would come here. Nobody's adjusted the stripping guides for large arbor reels. And what does that mean? I've just shown you about keeping the direct contact, that direct line. And going into the details of the design of the rod means, oh, didn't get quite the sweep then because I was talking to you, but it's about having that direct contact. The angle of the line at all times, removing slack, removing all the corners in the system. Oh, we took, he took, he took, he'll come back. Like that. Let it go. <laughs> oh, no. oh, there you go. <laughs> and we don't need you oh, Oh, no. There is a knack to it, though, isn't there? Oh, yeah. I, I, 
Well, it's I'm an actor by trade. It's not easy to do, is it? How would I would like to do it? Oh, there's a lot going on. Yeah, yeah. I'm the sound man, I'm the cameraman, I'm the actor, I'm the director, I'm the editor, I'm the tackle designer, I'm the fly fisher, and I'm the security guard as well. But you all, I wouldn't change it for the world. No, no.